The Magic of Thinking Big by David J. Schwartz, Philosophy Doctor. Chapter 5 How to Think and Dream Creatively, Part D. If he laughs at the idea and doesn't give it a second thought, and probably 95% will laugh at it, chances are he suffers from tradition paralysis. But the 11020 who says, that's an interesting idea, tell me more about it, has a mlaw that's turned to creativity. Traditional thinking is personal enemy number one for the person who is interested in a creative personal success program. Traditional thinking freezes your mind, blocks your progress, and prevents you from developing creative power. Here are three ways to fight it. Become receptive to ideas. Welcome new ideas. Destroy these thought repellents, won't work, can't be done, it's useless, and it's stupid. A very successful friend of mine who holds a major position with an insurance company said to me, I don't pretend to be the smartest guy in the business. But I think I am the best sponge in the insurance industry, I make it a point to soak up all the good ideas I can. Be an experimental person. Break up fixed routines. Expose yourself to new restaurants, new books, new theaters, new friends, take a different route to work someday, take a different vacation this year, do something new and different this weekend. If your work is in distribution, develop an interest in production, accounting, finance, and the other elements of business. This gives you breadth and prepares you for larger responsibilities. Be progressive, not regressive. Not that's the way we did it where I used to work, so we ought to do it that way here but how can we do it better than we did it where I used to work? Not backward, regressive thinking but forward. Progressive thinking. Because you got up at 5.30 a.m. to deliver papers or milk the cows when you were a youngster doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea for you to require your children to do the same. Imagine what would happen to the Ford Motor Company if its management allowed itself to think, this year we built the ultimate in automobiles. Further improvement is impossible. Therefore, all experimental engineering and designing activities are hereby permanently terminated. Even the mammoth Ford Motor Company would shrivel fast with this attitude. Successful people, like successful businesses, live with these questions, how can I improve the quality of my performance? How can I do better? Absolute perfection in all human undertakings from building missiles to rearing children is unattainable. This means there is endless room for improvement. Successful people know this, and they are always searching for a better way. Note, the successful person doesn't ask, can I do it better? He knows he can. So he phrases the question, how can I do it better? A few months ago, a former student of mine, in business for just four years, opened her fourth hardware store. This was quite a feat, considering the young lady's small initial capital investment of only $3,500, strong competition from other stores, and the relatively short time she had been in business. I visited her new store shortly after it opened to congratulate her on the fine progress she had made. In an indirect way I asked her how she was able to make a success of three stores and open a fourth one when most merchants had to struggle to make a success of just one store. Naturally, she answered, I worked hard, but just getting up early and working late isn't responsible for the four stores. Most people in my business work hard. The main thing I attribute my success to is my self-styled weekly improvement program.